Welcome to Creating from the Heart. I'm Susie Vance, and today I have with me Valerie Marac. Valerie. Yes, Susie. <laughs> Tell me, you've had quite a life. Mm -hmm. You have been a videographer yourself. A documentary producer and director. There you go. Yes. And among other things, you interviewed the Dalai Lama? That's right. Twice, That's an twice, actually. Twice? Yeah. So how did that happen? I'm going to tell the short story. Oh, all right. <laughs> we were doing a documentary video called Shadow Over Tibet, Stories in Exile. Uh-huh. His Holiness had come to Chicago, and we thought, yay, we could make a different film if we got an interview with H.H. <laughs> H. as people call him. They do. <laughs> in certain circles, yeah. Okay. And he was in the country for maybe two months. Mm -hmm. We literally, our proposal chased him across the country. Uh-huh. And right before he was leaving the country, his personal secretary called and asked, his, his Holiness wants you to come to India. He is granting you an interview. Oh my God, so not that, in the U.S. you had to go yeah, to exactly, India. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And we're documentary filmmakers. We can't rub two nickels together to get across the country, let alone get to India. But one of the things as we were sitting around the table going, can we do this? Can we not do this? Can we do this? Should we do this? I said to my... How can you not do it? Exactly. I said to my partner, when a holy man knocks, do not answer the door. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> and when we said yes to it, then the doors opened like it does in life, right? When you yes, say yes. It does. Yeah. So you went to India and yes. the rest is history. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, you have sort of a new theme in your life these days. Tell me about that. What you're you're not interviewing the Dalai Lama anymore, and you no. don't do documentaries. I don't think. No. And what shifted, and what's up? Okay. Mm. What shifted is that I could have making documentary films is not for the faint of heart. It <laughs> takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of fundraising. It takes years of your life yes and i and then you have an hour-long film or a <laughs> half an hour film or a 10-minute film like whatever you've created decided that yeah. you've created and people watch it and then it has a shelf life it's over <laughs> yeah and and it may be popular for a while and somebody might come back in history and look at it Maybe. To see something. If the technology is still available in the future <laughs> right. kind of thing. And I decided that I had the information in my heart and in my head. And that I had a voice. Which was interesting because as I grew up, and one of the reasons I went into documentary filmmaking was to help other people have a voice because I grew up thinking I didn't have one. And so now it's your turn. And so <laughs> now whoever will listen to me, I will speak to. <laughs> That's how I met Valerie <laughs> in Toastmasters. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So what are you up to? Well, I'm, my, my main talk is called Transforming Communication, Principles to Create Peace, Power, and Possibility. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's really about, you know, Sometimes communication can feel like you're in a boxing ring. You go round after round after round and nothing happens except you're both like beat up. Yes. Right? Yes. And I help people to change, transform the boxing ring into a sandbox. Nice. Where they can play creatively, create, if that's possible to creatively create, <laughs> to create and play and have fun with communication and and move whatever conversation it is forward. That they want to have. Yes. Right. Great. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. So tell us some examples. Can you do that? Some examples of, of creating their stories. Well, I can talk about the principles. Great. Okay. The so the first principle, first and foremost, the principle is listen. We don't listen. <laughs> Statistically, we remember only 1% of what we listen to. That's statistically, that's an average, mm -hmm. which means that people that listen well probably remember about 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 
This is why they tell you when you're going to give a talk to say you're going to tell them three things <laughs> and then you tell them those three things and then you remind them that so that maybe they walk out with one, two, three. Maybe, if they're lucky. Yeah. yeah. So an important part of listening is recreating what you've heard. Uh-huh. And when you recreate what you've heard, that does several things. One, it validates the other person that you truly have given your attention to them. Yes. That what they're saying matters. It doesn't matter whether you agree with it or not. And then recreating what you heard them say. What I heard you say was X, Y, Z. And they also have the opportunity to say no, RST, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. or whatever, uh -huh. that I, I said this, and then you recreate that. And then an amazing thing happens when somebody feels listened to. Right. They feel honored, they feel respected. And guess what happens? They are open to listening to you. What a concept. What a concept, duh. <laughs> I, as an example, I had an interesting conversation with someone the other day who was politically opposite of what I was. And both of us could have and almost fell into the trap of, you know, just spitting things at each other. Like, well, blah, 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 but blah, 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 you know, just like that and not getting anywhere, you know, not, not creating anything. And I just stopped myself. I Good just for stopped. You. I said, all right, what do I stand for here? Uh huh. And I recreated what he said. And then I asked him a couple of questions. That's another technique or another thing to do is ask them some questions, not in challenging, but to get deeper or Curiosity. broader. Yeah. And, uh, and we ended up having a wonderful, wonderful discussion. Who knew? Yeah. Just by I listening. Yeah. We could have been enemies forever after a single conversation and we weren't. It was all good. I love yeah. that story. That's fabulous. Thank you. So, as you have done this, mm -hmm. have you been teaching other people how to do this? Yeah, well, I do in my speaking, I also coach. I'm a communication coach and help people with individuals that, or individual situations or individual people. Mm -hmm. And leaders, leaders in organizations that are want to enhance the teamwork in their organization right? and things Perfect. like that. Mm -hmm. What a gift you are giving. Mm, thank you. <laughs> so tell me about this, this ah, book. Okay. Yes, I'm a contributing author to a book called Overcoming Mediocrity. It's actually a series of books, Overcoming Mediocrity, and I'm in Victorious Women. Okay. And there I am, right on the front cover. Ooh. <laughs> and it, it tells my story of how I got to the point that I am now and something of my childhood and some of the things I learned as I went along. Can you give us a little synopsis? Uh, well, I'll tell you one of the stories uh, that helped me, I think, be a documentary filmmaker and now be mm -hmm. a speaker is that uh, I was disowned by my family at the age of 18. And it was 1970. What does disown something mean? for? I think. What does disown? Oh, mean? my parent. My, I they was. Speak I was. To you. No, not only I was cut off completely. Okay. Financially, emotionally, socially from my family, I was alone. I'm so sorry. Maybe <laughs> I think it turned out pretty well. <laughs> well, we have high gas prices now. <laughs> in the 70s, we had high gas prices, and there were lots of gas lines uh -huh. and various things like that. Not a great economy to get a job. Uh -huh. And because I was still technically a student, I was considered voluntarily poor, so I couldn't get help from the state. And so I, I was just adrift. It was the only time in my life that I ever did anything knowingly illegal on purpose because I was hungry. Yes. <laughs> and uh, what I did with my life, I think I had like 10 bucks, that like, which was like a treasure Mama. chest. <laughs> I went to a bookstore and I bought a book on foraging for food. 
And this particular book, I was in Bloomington, Indiana. It uh -huh. wasn't exactly like it was in the wilderness. Uh -huh. And uh, there, but what attracted me is that there was a chapter on what grows in a city that you can eat. Very good. And I survived on the kindness of some strangers and eating weeds out of vacant lots in Bloomington, Indiana. You are amazing. <laughs> and what I learned from that, rather than take away like, oh, pity poor me and right? all this stuff, I learned I was resilient. Yes, you learned you could do it. I learned I could do it. And there wasn't anything in my life since then that I haven't been able to take what I learned from that period of my life and bring it in. Uh huh. So that story is part of and who is my this? biography. Who is this? Oh, no. this. Oh, oh, this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is <laughs> this is Holly hugs a lot. Holly hugs. Holly a lot. hugs a lot. Yes, my husband named her. He he gets the credit <laughs> for naming her. In fact, she will hold a phone for you. Yeah, perfect. Yes. Yeah, which is a nice little thing to do. Uh huh. But on her belt, this is the she holds the five principles <laughs> of transforming communication. Uh huh. Listen, look, leap, love, and uh oh, listen, love, learn, leap. I've forgotten the last one. Well, anyway, It'll all come. five of them. Yeah. <laughs> what I like about her is that she's always ready to give a hug. Oh, laugh, that's it, laugh, there yes. Go. So don't look, forget that she's, one. She's smiling at you. <laughs> if you wanna tell a joke, she'll laugh for you. If she wants somebody to listen, you don't have anybody to listen, look at that. How can you resist somebody listening? Right. Somebody listens to you all the time without judgment. No judgment from Holly. And so you keep this on your desk. I, I keep bet. it on my desk, yes, <laughs> yes. And she's willing to look. She can look anywhere. She's buoyant enough and she'll to listen. take a look. Yes, you, she'll leap. You can throw her across the room and she's still okay. And uh, love, she's ready and laugh. to love and laugh, yes. <laughs> So that's Holly hugs a lot, and I I give it to people in my speaking that like the first person that's brave enough to uh -huh. answer a question or own up that that they have a certain view of conflict or something they get Holly hugs a lot. <laughs> so and I and I just really uh, I like her because she's a great reminder. As a matter of fact, here oh. you got your own Holly hugs a lot. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to put her on my desk. <laughs> Great. That's fabulous. So with all of this, do you have any words of wisdom for people who are stuck or searching or, you know, and they could be, you know, in the middle of college and their parents disown them? Or they could be older and suddenly find themselves out of work. Or mm -hmm. they could be just not fulfilled. What would you say? What I would say is the answers aren't outside of you. The answers are inside of you. Mm -hmm. And be willing, sit with yourself. Just, it might take a while. It might take 10 minutes. It might take a few days. But just sit and listen to the love inside of yourself. Even if you feel like, I don't love myself, how could I do that? No, there are things, like that story I told you about the weeds in the vacant lot. I didn't get the lesson of that mm -hmm. or the benefit of the lesson until years later. Mm -hmm. However, I was willing to look at the things that I have experienced in my life and allowed that to carry me forward in other areas of my life. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do. Don't look for the answers outside. Look for the answers inside. People aren't, they don't care about what you know. They don't care about what you can do. What they care about is who you are. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And even when you're in an interview for something, that's what they're looking for, yeah. not all that other stuff.
Right. They might be asking questions around that, but they're really looking for who you are about how you respond to them. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Valerie. You're welcome. This has been fun. <laughs> uh -huh. Creating from the heart, the artistry of living. See you next time. Bye.